Live from Market Square in downtown San Antonio, this is SA Live. Well, in answer to your question, it looks like the whole thing so far. So far. Uh, happy Wednesday, everybody. Yeah, David Elder is out at Smoky Moe's to give you a taste of their good old barbecue. And we're going to check in with him a little bit later on in the show. I don't see any bite marks in that thing yet. That's good. Yes. <laughs> you know that's going to happen in the next few minutes, probably. Oh, probably. Yes. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Well, of course, with the cold weather, because did we hit a couple of records? This morning, we got like, down to 26 degrees, the coldest we've been since uh, right around the first of the year. Remember <laughs> at New Year's when we were out there suffering? <laughs> and even last night, we hit a record low temperature for yesterday's date. Oh, my gosh. 26 degrees this morning. Brr. But. Okay. So would, would you rather it be really cold or really hot like would you rather it be 26 degrees or would you rather it be say i don't know 106 i would assume dry heat i would say <laughs> usually to get that hot it is drier heat uh -huh. but yeah i mean that's just you know you walk outside and you're like, or you walk outside and it's like mm -hmm. oh burr but mm -hmm. See, my thinking is you can always put more clothes on. Yes, that's what I think. You can always layer. Right. You know, but you can't peel your skin off. Right. <laughs> Unless you stay outside too long and it's going to do that. So that's the question. Right. And I, and I think with more, uh, you know, you can drink a nice something cool to cool you off, but then warm comfort food. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, nothing beats that. So let us know at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter what you prefer, 26 or 106 degree weather. All right. Well, this recipe will definitely warm you up from the inside out. Oh, Roxanne Quintero, the founder of the Fideo Loco Festival, is here to share more. This is just such a perfect cold weather soup, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes, because it's cheap and it goes a long ways and it's warm. <laughs> yeah, it's warm and it's just... It, just one of those, it's like a mac and cheese type thing where you just love to eat it, yes, right? It makes you yes, feel good. So how do, we, how do we get started okay, here? Okay, we're going to start off with, uh, Mike's going to toast the vermicelli, the fideo. Okay. You want to make sure, the key is to make sure that you toast it to like a golden brown. Okay. It's all in how you toast it. And, and that stuff gonna... is inexpensive to buy, yes. right? Oh, very inexpensive at 22 cents a box. Woohoo! 22 and cents a box, that's, that's it? Yeah. Oh, wow. And um, Fiona's going to start off with grounding the beef. You can use any protein you want, chicken. After Thanksgiving, you can use your leftover turkey, sausage. Yeah, because this is one of those where there is no set recipe to this. There no. are probably, uh, for every you know million people, there's a million different right. recipes mm -hmm. for Fidel, chicken. right? Chicken, last year people yeah. were using prime rib. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it's also, a, uh, we have the second annual Fidel Local Festival coming up mm -hmm. in November 25th on a Sunday at the um, Smoke Barbecue Brew mm -hmm. and Venue at the across from Sunset Station, mm -hmm. and we have a cook-off also. So oh, wow. it's competition, who thinks they make the best fideo in Texas. So you can get really uh, creative with it, Very right? Very creative, yes. what, are, what are some of the creative ways that you've, you've seen? Oh, well, we had um, prime rib. Somebody right? entered prime rib right? last year. Uh -huh. We had uh, chicken. We had turkey. It's, it doesn't matter. It's whatever recipe has been passed down generation to generation. Gotcha. And as far as vegetables to put in it, you've got, oh, obviously, yeah. some pinto beans to go in. Mm -hmm. but you can again. use corn, potatoes. Oh, potato. oh, wow. Yeah, you can use any. I, mean, I wouldn't think of potatoes. That's a great idea. Endless. So it's also eaten as a side, right? Oh, yeah. You can use it also as a side. Dry. You don't have to use it soupy. Uh -huh. Some people like it. And then dry as a side with, you know, any kind of protein you want. Uh-huh. Do you usually eat it on the soupier side? or the? I or prefer the, it on the soupy side. Okay. But a lot of people use it. I mean, have it however to each they want. their own. Mm -hmm. Right. And then again, as, if it's a soup, then a nice big, you know, crusty bread thrown in there or something mm -hmm. like that. Or, or, or you do it. Do it. Yeah. Grilled cheese. <laughs> yes. Right. I mean, it, or the quesadilla, something like that would yes. be perfect. So, okay, okay. Uh, this takes a couple of minutes. Well, it's starting to brown just yeah. a little bit there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. all right, add a little bit of oil. There, or whatever and then you want to put in there. we'll say this is browned, and yes. we add a little bit of mm -hmm. water. You want to make sure you put the water to cover the vermicelli, the fideo. Okay. Cover it enough. So just about <laughs> yay much. Yes. Looks and then at that point, you can start adding your tomato sauce. All right. And, and all the other ingredients that you want. And then we'll transfer what Fiona's cooking up over here to there. Put and the then spices you, in right now yes. or wait? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and what, what are the, what is this? That one is bouillon. That's it. That's just chicken, chicken bouillon. bouillon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just the packaged chicken just bouillon. And that, of course, those chicken are. chicken broth, beef broth, whatever you want to put in there, mix it up. And then we can put Fiona's in there mm -hmm. and then we'll just simmer it. And those little bouillon packets too cost exactly. pennies basically, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Wow, so this whole meal. Oh yeah, it goes I a mean, long way. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Goes a long way. Now at the festival, I mean, tell us what's gonna be happening besides well, gonna, of course all the food. Sure, we're gonna have sampling from uh -huh. twelve thirty. Yes, sir. Okay. Sampling from twelve thirty to two thirty. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have competition um cook off competitors coming in from Odessa, Texas and Kyle, Texas. We have some lined up already from Uvalde. So just everybody, you're gonna be able to sample free from everybody. And then, yeah, oh, and wow. then everybody is going to, um, we're going to be able to do judging at three, and then the winner's going to be announced at five o'clock. Okay. But there's going to be live music entertainment, Ballet Folklorico. Some of our proceeds are going to, of course, this year, a different nonprofit organization who dedicates um, their campaign to bullying, for, to anti-promoting bullying. Mm -hmm. And so this year we've selected SA Bully Free. It's with the Robert Piquin Quiriogas family, the first San Antonio boxer. Okay. His family has dedicated um, their time um, educating the children in San Antonio. Well, it's for a great mm -hmm. cause. And again, it is the Sunday after Thanksgiving. So yes. if you're looking for something to do and you need some good recipe ideas, because yeah. sometimes you're like, okay, what now can I do with all right. those leftovers? Boom, this is perfect. Is. So yeah, you head on over there and it is the second annual Fideo Fest. Fideo Loco Festival, mm -hmm. and it is November 25th, 1230 to 7 o'clock, 1170 East Commerce, or go to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. So, okay, cold weather in Texas, oh, it can mean a lot of stuff, can it? Oh, yes, 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 it can, and I headed up to Board and Brush in New Braunfels to check out the really cool DIY stuff you can make for your home, and they, they provide all the supplies. Take a look. Well, get creative this holiday season, and why not make something festive for your home that's incredibly unique? And you know what? You made it yourself. With their help, of course. We are here at Board & Brush in New Braunfels, and Chris Macklin, studio owner, joins us. And we are going to be making this piece of art right here, right? And here at Board & Brush, the cool thing is that you supply all the materials, right? Correct, we supply the lumber, we supply the stencils, the paint, the stains, everything you need to build your project, create your piece of art, is available here when you, when, you, when you come into the studio. And what a great thing to bring home for the holidays or give as a gift because then it's priceless because you made it. Correct. <laughs> okay, so how do we get started? Because Christina here is gonna help us out. First step in the process, is going to be distressing the wood. And we, when we distress the wood, we use various tools. We use a hammer, we use a meat tenderizer, we use rebar, it's hook. It's so fun! Next step in the process is going to be sanding. And we have these wood blocks, mm -hmm. and you want to sand the edges, sand the corners, uh, where you distress, just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. I'm saying we go to staining. Okay, and you've got a bunch of different choices as far as right. colors, right? We have seven different stain colors for you to choose from. Uh, the darkest being in being ebony, all the way down to a Sedona red. So we stained the wood. Correct. By the math through the magic of television. Correct. Ah. <laughs> Correct. And it's that dark walnut color. It is dark okay. walnut. And so after we stained it, then we had to basically create the project. Right. So now we do that by attaching these support, this support to our board. That way it's one piece. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Nicely done. There we go. Okay. Yay! So now our project. I'm drunk with power! <laughs> this is what we call stencil prep. So stencil prep is a two-person effort. One person holds and the other person pulls the uh, the grid paper from the back. The technique we teach in the studio is to keep the paper very low to the board, as close contact to the board as possible, and go very, very slow. Then we lay the stencil down, turn it over, we lay it down, and we center it on the board. Then we take this little squeegee, and we just get all the air out. From the center out. From the center out. Okay, stencil's down, now it's time to paint. Okay, so we so got three colors. We got three colors. We have a white, mm -hmm. we have a red, mm -hmm. and we have a green. Okay. Typical Christmas colors. Okay. And then up and down motion, just dabbing, you want to put the paint wherever the wood is. Okay, so if we kept painting it, this would be the finished product. And you did a couple of cool effects on it as well that, that folks can learn, right? Right, so on the edges of the wood, we used a chip brush. It took the white paint, and we just created little streak marks to give it that frosty look. Dip the paint, dip the brush into the paint water mixture, and then just flicked it on our fingers, and it created these, oh, like these snow, the snowflake yes. look. 
Just kind of a little splattering. Right. Yes. Lightly sand it to remove some of that paint to give it a little bit of more of a distressed look so it doesn't look so pristine. Mm -hmm. Then we take wax and we put wax on it and what wax does is it mutes the vibrancy of the paint, uh, gives it a more down home, rustic-y, antique, antique look. look. And I'm home for the holidays. Here is the finished product. And you can make something just as cool as this if you head up here to Board and Brush in New Braunfels. And Chris has got a great special for our SA Live viewers. Thank you. So for the month of November, Live N-O-V-E, or Live November, L-I-V-E-N-O-V. -E Get a countdown to Christmas sign with any adult registration from for the month of November. All right, well, Chris, Christina, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And for more information on Board and Brush here in New Braunfels, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. What's so great about things right. like that is it's it looks so beautiful right. and, and so they, but and it's kind of simple to right. do. Right. Well, and they they help you the entire you know the entire every step along the way you know so it's going to look phenomenal when you leave. That's great. I, I'd love something like that for <laughs> especially a Christmas decoration right? like that. All right. Coming up, are you an energy vampire or an energy generator? We have five tips to help you get that boost of energy you've been looking for. Well, this has probably happened to all of us. Sometimes you just feel tired, and there may be a medical reason behind it, but it could be your own fault. And Dr. Deb Matthews is here to answer the question, are you an energy generator or an energy vampire? Just kind of sucking the life out of you, right, and getting tired. You know, that's the most common thing that I hear people complain about when they come to see me is, I'm so tired, I just need more energy. 
And a lot of times it's like, oh, I need more sleep. I didn't sleep well. I need more. But it's not necessarily that all the time, right? I have five things that we do commonly that drain our own energy like vampires. Okay. So the first energy vampire that you want to avoid is unnecessary worrying. You know, we make mountains out of molehills. And yeah. most of the time, do the things that you worry about happen anyway? The second energy vampire is junk food. When we're tired, what do you crave? Just comfort food and yeah. something easy and that's yeah. not healthy and you just want to make it, yeah. The sugary junk, though, makes yeah. your energy go up and then it crashes. Okay. The third energy vampire is clutter. You're pretty sure you left your car keys on the counter, but you can't see them because of all your stuff. So when you search through all your stuff, you're wasting your energy. Okay. Fourth energy vampire is overscheduling, and this is one that I struggle with. You drop your kids off at school, then you got to race across town to that appointment. Being overscheduled is exhausting. I was just thinking about that this morning because it was working. Then we had a, a meeting and working this, and then and you know I have to take my son and here, and it's like, okay, when am I going to be able to sit down and relax? It's exhausting. Fifth energy vampire is dehydration. If you allow yourself to become dehydrated, you are sucking your own energy dry. So let's avoid those things. All right. So on the other side, let's instead of let's talk about what we can do to, it. to become an energy generator. Okay. Okay. So if you will indulge me and jump up on here with me, All we've right. got these little mini rebounders because the first tip is move your body. So, so this is not going to wear you out. This will add energy. Yeah. The the rebounder helps to get your blood flowing, gets your blood flow to your brain, and you know I know when you're tired, you don't feel like exercising, right? Right. But if you'll just bounce for a few minutes. Then when you hop off and get back to work, you'll have more energy. Okay. That's so no obviously fun. you can't do work or read necessarily. Yeah, <laughs> but you so do for drink. 30 seconds, just a couple of minutes. That's really all it takes. Okay. Okay. So, so this is one of them. Yeah. Second energy generator right. is to feed, fuel your body, right? You need healthy foods to generate energy. The third energy generator is to calm your body. So this might sound a little surprising because we think of things like um, breathing exercises and meditation as being relaxing. But if you calm your brain, it will work so much better for you for the whole rest of the day. So I would assume that means putting this thing away let thing and let down. your brain just kind of chill let out. Let your brain mm -hmm. have a break. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Fourth energy generator is to rest your body. So this is obvious. Of course, you need enough sleep to have mm -hmm. energy. But sometimes it's hard to sleep, right? Lots of people struggle. If you do the rest of these tips, you'll find that you sleep better too. And the fifth energy generator is to hydrate your body. But when you're tired, we tend to reach for energy drinks and coffee, but the caffeine is a diuretic, so you don't get properly hydrated. You need to drink water if you're gonna be an energy generator. And just fill a big cup of water and keep it full all day long because you have to drink what? Like about, eight? about eight glasses of water a day is kind of a good average for most people. Okay, and you have written a book I about have. hormones and all sorts of good stuff. Yes, it's called This Is Not Normal, A Busy Woman's Guide to Symptoms of Hormone Imbalance, mm -hmm. and your audience can get a free copy at Is It Your Hormones? Com. Okay. Well, doctor, thank you very much. Some fantastic tips. And yes, I do feel a little more energized. Yeah, because you know, Not living so well is the best medicine. Okay. For all these tips and a whole lot more from Dr. Deb Matthew, visit SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Still ahead on the show, we introduce you to a San Antonio who is, as you saw it, unicycling across the country. His inspiring story a little bit later on in the show. And David Elder is serving up good barbecue, ooh, ooh barbecue chicken too, at Smoky Moe's, a taste of their smoked brisket, and that's not chicken, that's turkey. Oh my God, no, 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 David, we, ooh, oh, that looks good.
Welcome back to SA Live on this crisp, I know, crisp fall day. Bracing. Yes. Brisk. <laughs> all the other adjectives. Yes. Well, a big plate of warm barbecue. Well, I mean, that just sounds good all the time, right? <laughs> or how about that and some smoked turkey for Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. David Elder is at uh, Smoky Moe's right now at 1604 and Shanefield to give you a taste. Oh. And hopefully he has a taste for us. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be tasting everything that's on the table right now, I'll tell you that. But first off, look at this brisket. That is a massive brisket. I've actually had to use different hands to hold it up. It's so heavy. But we're out here at Smoky Moe's to talk about their new big food challenge, talking about this massive brisket that you can come out here and eat. And to talk more about the challenge, we got Roger Harris, regional developer with us with Smoky Moe's. And we also have a brisket that's getting ready to get trimmed up right here. And look at it. Oh, my goodness, it is so juicy. But, Roger, talk to me. What are the rules to this challenge? Well, it's Battle of the Brisket. I haven't been excited about something like this in a long time with Smoky Moe's. Um, but yeah, if you can come and eat uh, five pounds of brisket, an average of five pounds, a whole brisket. <laughs> five pounds. In 45 minutes. That's a pretty lenient amount of time. Yeah. But then when you actually look at what the product, because you see him cutting right there. But then, and Ted, show him what, this is what, this is what you actually, this is what the, the end result is. And this is like a filing cabinet of meat. This is like what you store away when you want to have some food left over for the springtime. But you can, <laughs> you can actually get this, I mean, 45 minutes to eat that amount. Now tell me, when does this actually start? When does this kick off? You can call today. You have to call a day in advance, so we're ready for you. You come in between 2 and 4, we'll schedule you. We'll have it ready to go. We put you at a table and put the timer on, and then it's all up to you after that. I love it. Um, but, yeah, it's exciting. I can't wait. to. You get your picture on the wall for permanent. Um, yeah, you gotta, you, you got to you get it on the wall, man. That's what everybody wants. Yeah. Every mom wants to see their kid's face on a wall somewhere or a refrigerator, and this is your opportunity to do it. And check this out. Jalapenos, onions, pickles. Nobody's saying you got to eat it, but why wouldn't you eat it when you come out here? You also got their delicious barbecue sauce, and I love this. It's, this brisket is valued close to $100, y'all. But when you do it, it's going to be free. And you get to win this basket right here. Look at this basket. Now, what's in the basket? In the basket, we've got a barbecue sauce. We've got a koozie, magnet. We've got an awesome Smoky Mo mug that you get a dollar refill with. And you get a T-shirt, a Smoky Mo T-shirt. And then the best part of it all, you get a $100 gift certificate in that. Woo! I love it. And you look at brisket still getting sliced up over here, y'all. But you can't eat a whole brisket to yourself for the holidays, or maybe you can. But if you got a family, you want to feed them a delicious smoked turkey. And with me now is Brianna Alba, the general manager out here. Now, talk to me about this delicious turkey that people can get for the holidays. Of course. So it's super convenient. It's 12 to 14 pounds. And with the turkey, you can also order sides, drinks. Um, also, we have bulk pies that we sell. I love it. And it's like pecan pie and pumpkin pie, right? Yes, sir. And it's, is it pecan or pecan? What do you say? I say pecan. pecan. Ooh, you're the third <laughs> option. Watch out now. Okay. And now talk to me about the sides. we got three delicious sides right here. But which one is each one? Okay, so we have pinto beans, cream corn, and green beans. Ooh, you got me at cream corn right there. Look at that. And you also get a little tea on the side. Now, y'all, this turkey comes by itself, but you can add on all this delicious stuff because it's all about convenience, right? You don't want to be stuck cooking all this food for the Thanksgiving holiday. You want to be able to spend time with your family. So you want to be able to come out, order your turkey, get it out there, and you're going to look like a rock star when you go up and you show up with this smoked turkey. I mean, because how many people get a smoked turkey for Thanksgiving? Not a lot of people. <laughs> Not a lot of people. But you can when you come out here. And it just looks delicious. Look how plump that is. Oh, my goodness. I know I'm touching it now. They're probably thinking they're going to be eating it later, and I'm over here touching all over it. But, you guys, it is just really cool stuff going on out here at Smoky Moe's. And this is at seven different locations all throughout San Antonio and New Braunfels that you can come out and do this brisket challenge. Of course, make sure you're ordering your smoked turkeys for the holidays. We're going to put a full screen up right here so you can get the information on this screen. And there you go. And that's how you get in contact with them. Make sure you're ordering your turkeys and make sure you're getting your briskets at 24 hours in advance. You guys, I'm super excited. Everybody grab a piece of brisket. We're going to cheers right here, y'all. Cheers. cheers. To battle of the brisket. To battle of the brisket. There we go. <laughs> we'll send it back to Mike and Fiona at Market Square. Bring some of that back. No. Oh. Literally, they nom, dipped nom, that nom, in that nom, sauce nom, and my mouth just back. watered right. instantaneously. Right. So. right. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we better be seeing some of that a little bit later on. <gasps> Thank you. All right. Oh, that looks so good. Right? Coming up, one person's trash is another one's treasure. And you can meet these sisters who discover those country chic treasures and bring them to the masses. The Jump Gypsy Sisters are coming to shirts. We're going to tell you their story next. And earlier we asked you, do you like 26 or 106? And Jackie says, cold, cold, cold. I'm loving <laughs> this weather. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Helen says, warm. Just can't handle the cold. 
cold, cold. So she's she's right. She's Julie, you gotta be kidding. Middle of the road. Well, middle of the road, seventy degree every day. I can't pick too cold or too hot. She's a politician, I think. <laughs> Robin says cold. You can always put on more layers, but you can only get so naked. Correct. Amen, Robin. <laughs>the next time you're at select HEB Plus stores and shop at Mia's Mirror Boutique, get ready to score some fabulous finds by Junk Gypsy. Joining me now are the purveyors of the world's finest junk, Amy and Jolie Sykes. Thank you so much <laughs> for having us here. Oh. This is so cool to be here yeah. in the shop. You guys have such cool things and cute things. And this is just an example of some of the items that are going to be in the boutique at select HEB Plus stores. Tell us how this all got started, because it really is a family <laughs> business all the way around. Well, first, welcome to Round Top. Welcome to Gypsyville. We're so happy to have y'all. And a few years after college, we decided that maybe the corporate life was not what we were cut out for, so we started selling junk. And this is where we ended up. So. <laughs> Talk about the brand. The yeah. brand encompasses so many things at this point. Um, we've had a show on HGTV. We still have a digital series on HGTV. Um, we have had a show on GAC. We've done airstreams for several celebrities, Miranda Lambert, Dark Bentley, Billy Joe Armstrong or Green Day, which was super weird the day Green Day <laughs> called us. Of course, we've had the store for several years, our website. We just did it. We had a, our book came out two years ago. We have some examples of what is going to be at the boat boutiques, yes. right? At, at Select HEB Plus yes, Store. Yes, it's a lot more than this, but this is a little sampling, some of our favorite things. We've had several meetings with Mia's Mirror, and they picked out a ton of stuff that they love, 
and we help suggest some of the things that are super popular here in the store. And this is, like Amy said, a very small sampling of what's going to be at all the Mia's Mirrors. We have a boot collection that Lane Boots manufactures for us. They are a Texas company out of Fort Worth. And so this is part of our boots that will be in the store. Um, so this turquoise and fringe, because you know every Texas girl needs yeah. turquoise and fringe. <laughs> and then we've got like our, the red cactus boots. This is actually our most popular boot, which will be in the stores, and it is called the Spirit Animal. We design all of our t-shirts here. And um, this is one of our most popular shirts since the Mama Tried. <laughs> Thelma and Louise shirts um, that are one also for you and one for your best friend. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and there's going to be accessories, belts and buckles and jewelry, necklaces. There's going to be like home decor, um, some of our custom drinkware, which is so popular here in the store. This is the personal favorite. We have these blankets that are made out of sweatshirt material and they are the coziest thing ever. And these are yard stakes and there's a ton of really cute uh, Christmas ornaments, tree toppers, all kinds of great stuff with them. Yeah. And then of course our book will be there. Um, our book actually became a New York Times bestseller. Um, the book was a labor of love. We wrote every word in that book um, and spent a lot of time. It's basically our whole story sprinkled in with DIYs. And HEB, I mean, they do so much for Texas. I mean, not only do they buy so many Texas products and their, their own line is all we ever buy. I mean, it's kind of what I migrate towards. But um, they just do so much to help Texans. They donate so much. There's so much charity there. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a company that we're proud is in Texas. You know? and, um, and then Mia's Mira is a woman-based business. So it's a super, it's a collaboration that we're really excited is happening. I feel like it was kind of written in the stars. So, um, so we're proud to be a part of it. So folks have a chance to come out and meet you guys, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, we're super excited. So we're going to be uh, in the store doing a meet and greet, signing books. I mean, you know, signing. I might be walking over and getting some samples in the bakery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll be there. We hope everybody comes out to meet us and um, we're super excited. So I think November 16th is going to be a whole lot of fun because from what I hear, there's going to be a band. What? There's going, I know. <laughs> there's going to be uh, Lane Boots is coming to do a trunk show with all of our custom boot line. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to be dashing over to the spirits or the wine section and or the beer and having to do this party right. So y'all need to come out and see us. For more information on the Junk Gypsy meet and greet, just follow at Mia's Mirror on Instagram.
beautiful view of downtown. Well, all right. So the guys are sitting around watching football, drinking beer. They'll talk about whether that was roughing the pass or not, but they're not going to be going, you know, things aren't working all that well together. Those are some of those health issues that guys just, you know, kind of avoid. However, the Mayo Medical Group is extremely comfortable and confident when it comes to talking about certain medical problems that the guys may have. And joining us today is Brandon Heath, who is the owner of Mayo, Mayo Medical Group. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks. So we are talking specifically about ED, erectile dysfunction. Yes. <clears throat> yes, ED is, of course, lack of blood flow mm -hmm. to the penile area. I think we're all pretty familiar with what it is at this point from the media and, and Viagra right. and these types of situations. We've actually been in business seven years and have treated over uh, 20,000 men with ED and low T. So this condition is very well known by our office. But it's not with a uh, pill. You have a completely different technique. No. Which is the Gaines Wave technology? Yeah. How does that work? I actually haven't been on TV for two years, um, but this... Technology is so different and so revolutionary and so mm -hmm. new. I'm just going to say Pfizer, who created Viagra, is very lucky this wasn't available 20 years ago or the little blue pill never would have been what it was. And so what causes this is, you know, you always hear about like plaque buildup in the heart and all that, but it's the same thing, right? Because yes. it's in blood, plaque so the, buildup so in blood vessels. It's reducing... called Gaines Wave. Okay. And what it is, it's a, it's a machine with a handpiece that produces acoustic shock waves. So there's a pellet in the chamber that vibrates back and forth thousands of times very quickly, and it actually applied to the penis breaks up the plaque that's inside the blood vessels, causing the blood flow to be blocked. Just like you have um, plaque buildup in your heart, you mm -hmm. have black plaque buildup everywhere in your body, including the penis. So it actually clears that out so the blood can flow again, and it stimulates the creation of new blood vessels. Okay. All naturally. It doesn't submit, uh, create a laser or no needle. It's non-invasive, 20, 30 minutes in office. Okay, I was just going to say, how long is the procedure taking? Then how many procedures? Is it one time, or do you need a, a series of these Depending procedures? on the severity, okay. which will be diagnosed, but you're going to come in and see William Martinez, who's a genius, by the way, at okay. this, a literal genius. He's treated more ED in Texas than we can shake our sticks at. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> he, uh, you're going to come in, and he's going to show you, based on the severity of, of, of your condition, you might need six treatments, you might need 12, and you might combine it with several other customized options. Okay. And there's no, because you were talking about sometimes the stigma that goes along with the pill, because even uh, the wife, girlfriend might say, well, he's going to take a little pill, you know. And, well, and the great thing, I mean, the difference, so why not just take the low blue pill or Cialis or something? Okay. Well, number one, you're on medication then. Okay. You have to remember to take it beforehand. It only lasts four hours. Maybe you even take it, and then it doesn't happen that night. And then there's a stigma, like your right. partner might think, ah, does he have to take a pill to get excited? And right. And now you're talking about the consultation, and you've got a special going on right now with that, right? Yeah, we do. So I just want to make one thing clear. This is a premium procedure. Right. Um, it's going to cost three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. This is like the LASIK of ED. But you have financing. Yeah, if that is an issue, if the money's okay. an issue of financing, 12 months, same as cash, so okay. that really takes that issue out of it. It's like, who's going to ever say, I wish I hadn't spent 5000 on LASIK, I wish I couldn't see clear. And for anybody that uh, calls right now, $99 consultation fee, right? Yeah, we normally okay. do $199, All right. but we're going to do it $99 for the callers today. Men or women, give a call and set up a consultation. Again, it's $99, call 210-361-1203, that's 210-361-1203, or go online to mayomedicalgroup.com. Brandon, thank you very much, appreciate it. Thanks that, for sir. having me. All right, good seeing you. All right, up next on SA Live, a recent high school graduate who has ties to San Antonio is giving back by riding a unicycle 4,000 miles across the country. What a ride. And earlier we asked you about the temperatures. My name is Silas Sherborne. I'm 19 and I'm unicycling across the United States. San Antonio is kind of a really special place because I'm actually, I was born in San
Welcome back to SA Live. Well, if you've ever been to our SA Live set, it's located, of course, right here in mm -hmm. Historic Market Square in downtown. And we have the opportunity to meet a lot of interesting people from around the world and, of course, the Alamo City. And one of them, <clears throat> excuse me, is a recent high school graduate, unicycling. Mm -hmm. Yes, you heard that right, unicycling across the country. He shares his inspiring story about taking this 4,000-mile journey. My name is Silas Sherborn. I'm 19 and I'm unicycling across the United States. San Antonio is kind of a really special place because I'm actually, I was born in San Antonio. So uh, it's really awesome to be back home. I was raised in a military family and so I kind of moved around all over the place when I was younger. So I was kind of used to the idea of not being in a place for very long in the first place, which kind of I feel like might have put me in the right mindset. I am uh, riding the unicycle across the United States for uh, a number of reasons, one of which being a very personal kind of growth kind of thing. Uh, figure out who I am, you know, wh what I like, what I need, that kind of thing. Uh, but I'm also doing this to support a nonprofit, which is also very personal to me. I decided to raise money for the Adventure Cycling Association. They're a nonprofit that's based in Montana, and what they do is they encourage, they inspire, and they empower people to travel by bicycle. The Adventure Cycling Association is for the betterment of the entire United States. That's right. It's not just, they're based in Montana, but it's not just local. It's actually a national. Uh, for the past several years, they've been working on a United States bicycle route system, the USBRS, and when complete, it's going to connect 50,000 miles of American landscapes, uh, north, south, east, and west. It's going to lower our carbon footprint as, as, a, as a nation, which is really important because of environmental damage that we're causing. So riding a bike just happens to be a really great way to, you know, counter that. Um, on top of that, it's also going to create active, healthier lifestyles for every single person that decides to ride on it. It's not just Americans. People uh, fly in from around the world to ride these trails across America. Uh, I've met people from Spain, Australia, the UK, uh, Vietnam as well. Just in the past number of months, actually, just riding the unicycle. Uh, so it brings everyone from around the world to, you know, see the country in a really organic way. This is a really hefty unicycle cycle. The wheel itself is the most eye-catching part of it all. It's 36 inches uh, and the saddle is probably another foot in the air. So I'm sitting four feet up on here and in order to get on I have to jump a foot and a half into the air in order to just get on the thing. And then once there I need to get pedaling fast. I need to establish a sense of balance. The interesting thing about unicycling is that it starts off as a really good core exercise but after you, after it becomes second nature it becomes a really big you know leg uh, I'm actually on Instagram and Facebook uh, my, my Instagram uh, handle is uh, transamerica 2018 documenting the journey I mostly just uh, take pictures and uh, I share them online for people to see uh, the I keep the the route posted I keep uh, you know my location is always updated uh, all of that so and the people I meet along the way as well that's quite an adventure. Well, for now, Silas Sherbone is on a break from his 4,000-mile trek because of the weather. His goal is to reach Savannah, Georgia as his final destination. He averages about 250 miles a week, and he estimates about four months to finish his journey. And you can follow Silas on Instagram at Transamerica2018. He's also writing to support the Adventure Cycling Association, a nonprofit that encourages people to travel by bike. So if you want to give back or find out more about Silas and his organization, go to adventurecycling.org. All right, tomorrow on SA Live, it's a tailgating Thursday, complete with sweet treats, perfect to root on your favorite team, plus the pride of the South Side. We're following up with Tony the Ball Boy oh, from Harlandale. Yeah. He has some exciting news to share. We're going to be right back with more.
You know, some people just want hot and cold. <laughs> well, Simon wants to run warm because he can't stand cold. So he'd rather it be 106. Because it was 26 this morning. Definitely, without a doubt, cold weather is so yes. beautiful. Those beautiful blue skies. Mm -hmm. Vanessa says, definitely the cold. Love wearing my boots. My makeup doesn't melt. And I'm not miserable <laughs> in the humidity. Amen. Can wear layers. When I get warm, I can take one off at a time. In the heat, I can only take off so much. Agree to that. And cold weather, great for, oh, oh, oh we saved the best for last. Uh, great for cuddling. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it's funny, even growing up in Michigan, though, having lived in Memphis down here for, gee, almost 30 years, sometimes cold's a little hard to take anymore, but I still love it. Sweaters. Yes, yes no, I know, and you so love I, your sweaters. I love my sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay warm out there. We will see you tomorrow. Indeed, it's not going to be as cold tomorrow morning, but still, you got to bundle up. So, okay. Well, we got something good on the show? Oh, tailgating yes. snacks. Humble House Foods. Yes. Ooh. Yes. That's right. Yes. And, and also, remember, we're catching up with Tony the Ball Boy from Arlendale. Oh, that's right. We're going to tell you the awesome news he has. It will give you just chills. It's so wonderful.